We're all married because we are God's bride. Amen. I'm married to Jesus. Amen. So we have a spiritual marriage and some of us are in a physical marriage. Some of us are waiting for that special individual. Amen. Some are praying that that individual out of their life. No, 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 no. We got to pray that individual in our life. Amen. Uh, You know, it's healthy. But so we talked about marriages last Sunday. And today I want to talk to you the love for children and parents. Love for children and love for parents. And I want you to understand as, as we're in this, as we're talking about distorted love. And the definition for distorted is pulled or twisted out of shape, misleading or false account or impression, misrepresented. It, it's amazing. I, I know we've all been in a relationship, whether it's a friend, whether it's, uh, you know what, I just feel like there's been some distorted love with my children or with my family or my marriage. We've all been through that where we felt like a relationship's been out of order or misrepresented. We've also felt like that. This is the reason why we preach the very first message is the love of God. You know, we have to have the love of God first before we can ever have anything else. We have to know and have the love of God and love ourselves because if I love God, I'm going to understand how to love myself as well. And it's amazing how we have a distorted love and we can walk out life with a distorted love. For example, we can easily go to God and ask him for this or that. And then we turn around and live a completely lifestyle, different lifestyle than what we ask God for. Amen. Amen. I can receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior, then walk out a lifestyle that doesn't represent him. That's distorted love. Amen. Oh yeah. Jesus loves me and I love Jesus and I'm in him and he's in me. And you know, uh, I'm part of the vine and I'm this and I'm that and everything else. But then your lifestyle doesn't show that that's called distorted love. It's twisted. It's out of shape. We talked about that within marriages. And today I want to talk to you about that for the love for children and love for parents. But I want you to put your hearts in this. You, you're probably, some of you probably already hit the off button because, well, I don't have kids. I don't have kids, so this doesn't apply to me. Let me tell you, we're going to go here because I want your mindset completely different because you are a child. You're a child of God. So we can look at it several different ways through this message that we are looking at it as raising up our children, being individuals to respect our parents. And it also goes spiritually that I am God's child. So I can learn how to be a child for God and how to respect him as my parent as well. So I want us to keep an open heart and an open mind because this word we can receive, all of us can receive. Because from what I understand, we are all a child of God. When I call upon Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I am a child of God. And that means I'm not only the child, then I have a parent and I need to know how to respect that parent and honor that parent that I may have long life, amen? That's what the word says. So let's jump in. Galatians 3.26, I want you to understand that you are a child of God, for you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So that tells us right there that we are all his children. If I believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then I am his child. Amen? I'm no one else's. I'm his child. That means he's going to pour out the blessings. He might pour out the correction, the correction but he's going to pour out the love uh, as well. Amen? It's important that we understand who we are. That I'm part of the royal priesthood. I'm his child. He calls me child. He calls me friend. You know what? He he loves me all the same. I can turn to him at all times and he loves me unconditionally. I'm his child. I'm his child whether I'm doing right or doing wrong. That that should be good news. 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that we when... When he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Proverbs 22, 6. We we know this. We like to quote this all the time. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child. Train up a child. I, I love Deuteronomy because Deuteronomy is probably one of the most important verses, especially in the Jewish culture. It, it's it's. It's really important that we understand Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6, 4, and it's, and it's the Shema. And it starts off, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. He's Jehovah. And I love how the scripture continues. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. 
Is there anyone here that loves the Lord with all their heart, with all their strength? And, and if we call him our, our Lord and Savior and we love him and he is all, it, we're giving him all of our heart. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all your strength. If that's the case, it's easy. See how many times we say that? But it's so easy we don't follow the other scriptures. Watch. You shall teach them diligently to your children. I love the Lord so much, but I forget to teach him to my children. I forget to be the example to my children. I forget to pray with my children. I forget to tell them that thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not lie. I forget to tell them what the Ten Commandments are. I forget to tell them that you should love your neighbor as yourself. I forget to tell them that how wonderfully they're made, how greatly they're made, how awesomely they're made, that they're not made by a mistake. They're not made by an accident. See, I forget to tell them that. But if I love God, then I should be representing God in all my life, and I should be representing that to my children. And as children of God, we should be representing that to our Father in heaven, how we love him. That in prayer, devotion, journaling, a reverence to him, a reverence to please him over man. When a situation happens in the world, I'm going to choose God Almighty's word over the world. If it costs me something, that's okay because my blessings come from the Lord, not the world. The money in your bank account is not really yours, it's God. He, he owns it. He has it all. You don't really own your house, God does. God has it all and owns it all. We're just supposed to be good stewards with what God blesses us with. But I, I love the fact in Deuteronomy, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your, in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. So that means you should be talking to your kids at all times. That means your lifestyle should be a representation of Jesus Christ at all times. But see how many times we have a distorted love. I've done it with my son, six years old. I get upset and I portray something else instead of God's love. Amen. And then I have to get on my knees and, and I'll repent and I'll make it right with God. And then I grab him. And because I want him to see what God would do, wants me to do is repent to him and apologize. Amen. How many times we get angry and we don't think we need to apologize fathers to our kids? Ladies, mommies, how many times? That's distorted love. We go ballistic, but then we don't teach them how to repent. So when they get out in the world, they don't know how to repent. They think it's a sin. They think they have to cover it. And then there's nothing that teaches them that, you know what? It's okay to cry. It's okay to ask for forgiveness. It's okay to get on your knees. It's okay to repent. It's okay to make it right. Doesn't matter what the world says, it matters what God's word says. How many times do we walk out as children of God Almighty? We do something, but we don't go back and repent. Or we don't ask for forgiveness. Or we don't ask for wisdom. I got this all figured out. See how it works both ways? You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. I, I love that scripture. You shall bind them on your forehead. You shall bind them on your arms and you should put them on your post. You know, you should put them at the front door. Men, you should put it at your, the word of God, at, at your bedroom door. See, if you notice, if you go to my office, you'll see what's called a mezuzah. It hangs right beside the door. It has the word of God. Usually it has the Shema that God is, you know, you know Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. Shema Israel, Adonai Elohino, Adonai Ikad. You can put whatever scripture you want, but it reminds you that God is one. And, you know, a lot of the, in the Jewish cultures, they'll take a mezuzah and they'll put it on the doorpost, not only at the house. If you go to my house, the front door has a mezuzah. You know, most of the time they'll put them at the, the door frame of their house going into their bedroom, the door frame going into their bedroom, because what it does is the, the uh, you know, a, as a Shabbat service, when they pass the word of God around in the Torah scroll, what a lot of the Jewish cultures does is they'll kiss the Torah scroll. They'll kiss the word of God because it's so precious. And what the mezuzah, what they do a lot of times is before the man enters into his bedroom, he places a kiss on the mezuzah on the word of God to let his wife know that he's been pure all day. 
Not just physically, but spiritually. But it, it says, teach them and, and put them. So if I teach my son the word of God, I could wrap the frontlets around your arm and it leaves an indention. There's a whole meaning between the frontlets, tefillins or phylatrix, whatever word you choose that you can wrap around your arm or you can put on your forehead. They, have, they wrap the, this tefillin around their arm and there's a special way to wrap it that the word of God will set here. So whenever they cross their arms to pray, that the word of God is the closest part to their heart. It's a reminder of God's word. That God's eyes are everywhere. Just think if we would raise our kids and teach our kids to have the respect of God's word that no matter where they're at, I'm being pushed by my friends, but I have the reverence of God that I'm going to choose wisely. I'd rather choose God's way than man's way. I'd rather choose God's way than, 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 the, oh, than the drugs, the addiction, or my best friend's way. Amen? This is the reason why it's very important. This is the reason why this Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9 is very important that we teach our children. It's never too late to teach our children. They might be old right now and out of the house, but it's never too late to teach the word of God to anyone. It's something that we have to do. It's a foundation. We have to teach the foundation so they will not be moved. We have to teach the foundation so whenever they decide to go the wrong way, God forbid if they choose so, so then they will come right back to God Almighty because they know the reverence, they know the strength, they know the power, they know Jesus Christ because they have been taught the word of God. The power, the manifestation, the presence. This is what we're in the midst I, I don't want Joshua, my son, to fear my wife and myself. Because you can raise a child where you put the fear of God in them and then they refuse to tell you anything that's going on in their life. I want that reverence to God Almighty. That it's God that's watching you. It's God that loves you. It's God that sees everything. It's God that's making the way. Not mommy and daddy. It's God that's going to open up the doors of heaven. Amen. All the windows of heaven and pour out your blessing. It's God that's going to manifest. It's God that's going to heal. It's God that's going to do this. I want that reverence in him that, it's, that he'll come to mommy and daddy. He'll discuss. He'll talk about how he had to make it right with God. He repents each and every day. Oh, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I love my son. But I have to raise him according to the word of God, that he has a reverence to the word of God and not to mommy and daddy. Because mommy and daddy will fail him, but God will never fail him. I, I want us to jump into this scripture. And I, I want to go a little bit further. Proverbs 13, 24, and we hear this all the time. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. And too many times we take the scripture and that's the first thing we think of. Man, take that rod and beat him. Well, abuse is not discipline. Although sometimes correction can feel like an abuse. Sometimes it feels that way from the Lord, amen? Because we choose to walk away instead of stand in his presence and receive it and receive his love afterwards as well. See, I, I love this scripture. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. Discipline. Let's take a word of that discipline because I, I'm going to preach from the second half of the scripture. And then I'm going to go back to the first half of the scripture to, to bring everything into perspective. But now I want you to remember, I'm just reminding you, reminding you that you might not have kids and you don't think this applies to you, but you, you, you are a child. You are a child of God and you have a parent and that parent, it, whether your parents are still alive or whether you get along with your parents or not, you have a parent and that parent is, is our father in heaven that loves you. And, and I want to explain to you discipline. What this means within the Hebrew is training. Discipline. Training, training to improve strength or self-control. Whenever we correct our children, are, are we training to improve to strengthen them? Or are we just trying to prove who we are? You know, I'm speaking to some men in the house too. Let me just be very honest and very blunt as I, am all, I, I, I always will be. I always will. But too many times, we as men, we become the worst competitor to our children that we think we have to win. And when we do that, we demoralize our children. We're not here to beat our children. We're here to give them strength, to raise them up, to put them at a new level. Not to put them down. My father in heaven never put me down. 
He tries to do everything to raise me up. And it's for us as fathers to raise our children up. It's not to compete with them. It's not about who's winning. It's none of that nonsense. It's about letting my son know that you are the best that God's ever made. And you can go from glory to glory. That you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. It's not about daddy knocking them down just to win the, the relay race. Amen? It's not about picking up the biggest ball and I'm going to knock my kid out in dodgeball. I'm going to win this thing. Really? What, what strength are we giving them? What are we doing to train them? Training to improve strength or self-control. Discipline. I'm going to read what, what it means within the Greek. It means from a Latin word meaning instruction or training is what discipline means. Learning that molds character and enforces correct behavior. Too many times we discipline and it does not enforce correct behavior. It causes worse behavior. Latin word meaning instruction or training. To discipline a person or a group means to put them in a state of good order so that they function in the way intended. Discipline, in spite of a popular misconception, is not inherently stern or harsh. Bible translators choose disciple as an appropriate term for one who learns by following. Have you noticed that the word disciple kind of goes with discipline? Jesus didn't come down and beat the living snot out of the, the, his chosen 12, did he? I mean, one of them needed it, amen? But he chose to love, he, he chose to love them. You know what? Let, let me just teach you and train you the ways. Let me just teach you. Although, you know what? I rebuke you, Satan and Peter. He still loved him. Just follow me. Follow me. What did he say? Hey, just come and follow me. Some of the best training that we can have is to have the time with our kids to have them follow us. To disciple our kids. To train them up the way they should be. And we as children of the most high God, we should be able to be those disciples because the great commission is to go out and preach the gospel. The great commission is to share and let everyone know what Jesus Christ has done because what did Jesus come to do? He came to make disciples and send them out. Well, I cannot be a disciple if I do not follow Jesus Christ. And God, our Father in heaven is just saying, I want you to follow me. I want you to read my word. I want you to pray. And I just, you know, if you just do that, then I'm gonna be able to train you. I'm going to lead you according to the word. And then you're going to become a disciple. And then as you become this disciple, you're going to become disciplined. That means, you know what you're going to have? You're going to be equipped, ready to do the work of God. Proverbs 8, 35, for whoever finds me finds life, wisdom. We need to teach this. We need to teach the scriptures. We need to teach. I, I you know, I, I've been going through something uh, with uh, my son the last few weeks that's rearranged my schedules and really put me in a turmoil where it's brought me into some really, really deep prayer. Uh, it's nothing bad, but just some things that, that, you know, it's growing things. It's growing pains on daddy. Amen. It's growing more, more pain with daddy than it is anything else. And luckily a coach went by the other day and said, do you need some help? Man, I need all the help I can get. And he saved me just by an instant. It's amazing how the coach can speak something and then, oh, okay. And then daddy speaks something and, ah, you know, it's just, oh my goodness. But you know, I, 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 I just come to the fact that, you know, for whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. I, I have to teach my son wisdom. I have to make sure that he knows this word. I, I have to teach everything of this book to the fact that we were in school the other day for over an hour in the hallway, pulling the slingshot back on fear, on problems, on issue. We was destroying Goliath right there in the middle of the hallway. About the time I think that we're all good, we're starting back over, not realizing that here's the principal and everyone else is watching on video. Amen. This is a nutcase. I probably made millions of dollars just through YouTube, just, you know, sharing with my son exactly how we're going to destroy Goliath together. We're going to pull the slingshot back. Whatever you picture, whatever you see as a Goliath, we're going to destroy because the word of God destroys our Goliath, destroys our enemy. But I'm teaching him this 
I'm teaching him how physically do it. I'm teaching him how spiritually do it. Oh, I want, do I, am I the best parent? Absolutely not. I'm probably the least of the least. I am still learning. There is no book that you can go buy off of any shelf, but the word of God on how to raise up your child. But I want him to know what David walked through. I want him to know what Moses walked through. I want him to know what God's word will do. That whenever we need something and you can't find mommy and daddy, you can always find God in the midst of everything. Oh, Lord, I, there's something that's coming about that I just witnessed on the Internet. Oh, what do I do? And God says to flee and to run. Amen. So I'm going to flee and I'm going to run from this situation because this is what God said. We have to teach. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him properly, trains him, teaches him, gives him the God's word to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Teach. Proverbs 8.36, but he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Proverbs 23.14, you shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. I, I, I love that. Well, that means I can beat him. Yes, beat your son, beat your daughter with all the word of God that you can. You can't give them too much of the word of God. Make sure they know everything from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Let them know how powerful God is. Let them know how God's a healer. Jehovah Rapha. Let them know about Jehovah Sikanu. Let them know about Jehovah Shalom. Let them know about El Shaddai. I want you to know who I am is. I want you to know who Emmanuel is. I want you to know who everything about God is. That God is the provider. God is going to correct you. God is the one that will love you more than mommy and daddy. God is the one that is going to make your way. God is the one that's going to tear down the mountains. God is the one that's going to destroy your Goliath. God is the one that's supernaturally going to do only what he can do is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Amen. This is what we have to have. This is what we have to teach. And this is what we have to believe as children of God. That I have a father in heaven that wants to bless me, protect me, be my counselor, be my buckler, give me wisdom at all times. But how many times as his children, we go out with our wisdom thinking we have it all figured out and all we do is make a mess. How many times have you tried to bake something without the instructions and it turned out a mess? How many times you put something on the grill and kind of forget about it and it's just a, you know, the fire department shows up and that's when you remember you had something on the grill. Amen. Proverbs 19, 18. Chasing your son while there is hope. And do not set your heart on his distinction, destruction. Don't focus on the destruction. Use the word of God. Hebrews 12, 11. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. It will bear fruit. We know all things will bear fruit. You can only serve one master. You can't serve two. So whatever master you serve is the fruit you're going to bear. I want to train my son. I want to be a child of God that bears his fruit. That when my son comes and I'm just irked that instead of lashing out in anger or unrighteous anger, there's righteous anger, but righteous anger will strengthen, will edify, will encourage, will train. And then there's what? Unrighteous anger that will destroy and put fear. I want my son. I know you want your sons and daughters. And as children of God, he wants us to bear good fruit. He wants us to bear the love, unconditional love that he is. First John 4, 8, he that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love. God is love. And so if I'm bearing the fruit of God, I should be able to bear fruit in love during all situations that instead of just mouthing off, I'm going to show love. I can still show correction in love. I can still discipline in love. I can still not spare the rod in love. It doesn't have to be hatred. It doesn't have to be overpowering. It doesn't have to be, oh, you know, I'm going to destroy this individual. It doesn't have to be a competition. Let me just show you who I am. Daddy's daddy and he's king of the house. Mommy's mommy and she's the queen. Oh, no, no. Am I making sense to anyone? Do, do we understand? I just, you know, because sometimes we have a distorted love within our lives, raising our kids, and we have a distorted love as being children of our Father in heaven, and we come to him with the distorted love that we shouldn't be corrected, or we're owed this, or we don't have to do this, and that's completely out of text. 
That's completely against the word of God. I am a child of God, but you know what? He, he has trained me. He's taught me. He's growing me. And you know what? There's correction and I should be bearing the fruit of, of him. I should be bearing his fruit. I should be bearing the fruit of the spirit. And if I'm not bearing the fruit of the spirit, I need to come to my father in heaven and say, sorry, I repent for I must, I, I, you know what? Change your child, change my heart that I will bear the fruit of the spirit, that I'll be a better husband. Ha, has anyone ever asked God, help me to be a better husband? Help me to be a better wife? Help me to be a better mommy? Help me to be a better father in heaven? I mean, don't call any, any man father in the world because you have one father and that father's in heaven, Amen. So I always refer to myself as daddy. Help me be a better daddy. But you know what, Lord? Don't stop there. Help me be better son to you. Change me that everything I do, everything that I'm going to do will glorify your name, Father. And never mine. 1 Corinthians 16, 14, and this is the greatest scripture, I think. Let all that you do be done with love. As you correct and you train and you do anything with your children, make sure you do everything with love. Make sure it has a loving heart behind it. Make sure it's connected with love and, and never destruction. Make sure it's connected with love and never competition. Make sure it's connected with love and never bitterness, hatred, or agenda. That's, that's distorted love. Amen. Because if you're not bringing up your child or if you're not coming to our father in heaven with a love, with the unconditional love, then you have an agenda. There's a manifestation. There's witchcraft. There's something else that you're trying to get instead of having a true love to our father God. So all I have to tell you is let all that you do be done with love. And when you do everything with love, then you're going to come into our Father's presence in the right standings with praise and thanksgiving. When you need to correct your sons or your daughters, that means you're going to manifest love. You're going to make sure that they are raised above. You might have to correct them. You might have to spank them. You're going to have to read the word to them, but they're going to know that there's a safe haven of love, that they can come to you for anything and everything. And that's what I want my son to know, that no matter what you do, maybe you blew it and you have to come to me and tell me that how you hit someone or you did this or you didn't pay attention in class, whatever it is, but you feel comfortable that you know there's going to be correction. There's going to be a consequence, but you know that the love is greater than the consequence. The love is going to be greater than my actions. Oh, that you're going to be unconditionally loved no matter what you come to me for. No matter what you tell me, no matter what you say, no matter what you believe, you have to have love. You might not like how they're living right now, but love destroys all things. You know why? You know how I can state that and I know that? Because when I was living the way I wanted to, it was God's love that brought me to him. And the only way we're going to see our kids change, the only way we're going to see them brought up according to God's word and living right is with love. The more hatred they want to dish out, the more love I've got to give them. The more he wants to be angry, the more I have to love him. Doesn't mean there's not going to be with correction or a consequence, but I'm going to love him. And I'm going to devour him love because God devoured me with love. Even though I was in the midst of sin, his outstretched hand still reached in the midst of hell and he loved me right there. He had open arms for me at all times. Promptly. The word promptly within that scripture means early, with little or no delay, immediately. I, I love the fact that we have to jump on things right away. There's a rabbinic tradition that I picked up years ago, and, 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 and it's also biblical. There's scripture to it. That as a high priest of your house, and this is something we'll probably talk about in Game Changers, as a high priest in your house, when you hear something that's out of order, you have to rebuke it right then. There's things that my son says, it's out of love. He doesn't mean, he doesn't know, but I rebuke it. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Well, I can't do this. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. There's things as high priest. Maybe you don't have a high priest. Maybe there are ladies, you're thinking I don't have a high priest in my home. Well, then you're the high priest, amen? And you can rebuke it right away. When something's out, I have to rebuke myself. No, I'm, whoa, I, that slipped out, man. No, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. There's power in your words. So when something is spoken into the atmosphere, it's, it's not, oh, it's going to come back. 
It's going to produce what you speak because this is God's breath. This is God's word. And this is the reason why it's very important as a high priest in your house that you have to rebuke it right there. You have to destroy it. You have to reverse it. And it's gone now in the name of Jesus. And you have that. Your kids are going to speak some things that's out of order. And you're going to have to say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. That's not going to come nigh to my house. That's not how you are going to be. You're not going to be that kind of son. You're not going to be that kind of daughter. You're, oh, you know what? I rebuke that in my life, Father God. Forgive me because that's not the child that you raised. We have to rebuke that. And we have to do things promptly. We have to do it early. Don't let things settle on. It's kind of like the doctor's report. You go for a physical. Amen? Does anybody go for a physical? Or is it just me? Oh, it's just me. Okay, hallelujah. Uh, you know, praise God. You know why they like physicals? is because anytime they can catch something early enough that, you know, there's a greater chance of getting it corrected. Amen? It's no different spiritually. Because if you allow something to set in, if you allow your was and your words to, to go on for years improperly, if you allow your plurals to go along, it's going to be a heyday to try to get it corrected. But if you can get it corrected right away, it's going to change life. Amen. I'm on Joshua. You know what? That's not, I know you picked that up from daddy because daddy, is, daddy speaks two languages. It's broken English, but I'm very fluent in redneck. I'm just telling you, but I got to correct my son. Nope. Nope. That, that should be were. That's R. And I'm retraining myself because I don't want to teach, disciple my son to speak incorrectly. So you know what that means for some of us? We might have to change. That means for some of us, this generational curse is destroyed right here, right now. It's not going nigh to my family. But we have to do it promptly, immediately. When you see Satan trying to camp in your house, if you let it go by, he's going to take a room. If you let it go by, then he's going to take the whole house. I'd much rather catch him at the door and smack him with that door and send him on his way than allowing him to camp in. Amen. And then we come to the very first part of that verse. Verse 20, verse 13, 24, Proverbs. He who spares his rod hates his son. I talked about beat, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. We talked about discipline and we talked about promptly. Now I want to go back to that very first verse. Uh, he who spares his rod hates his son. I want you to understand what a rod, a rod is also a representation of a staff. It, it's a walking stick. It's used to walk. This is back explaining a shepherd, a shepherd that that's, has a herd of sheep he has a rod, he has a staff, and he uses this in many different ways. He uses this to lean, to support himself. See, when I lean on the word of God, it supports me. It guides me, it directs me. He uses the stick, the staff, the rod to defend the sheep. We use the word of God to defend our families, our children. You know our Father in heaven, you know what he uses? His word. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. You know, the, the enemy chooses huh, to, stiff you, to sniff you out, man. He, he's, he's trying to get you, Peter. He, he's trying to destroy you, Peter. But you know, don't worry. I've prayed for you. We have to use the word of God to defend our family, defend our kids. You know what? It's used for punishment as well. You know, the shepherd that as he takes his sheep, he has to take his staff. And a lot of the staffs have, it's a stick. And then at the very top, it has a, like a round hoop on it. And, you know, he takes his staff. And, and what he does is he, you know, he has to correct the sheep with this. And he'll spank them if they get out of line with this same staff. And then they'll get back in line. And then there'll be an order. But at the end of the day, whenever they're at the still waters and, and they're at the green pastures, he uses that same rod to rub them on the back, to rub them on the sides, to show them love. The reason why he does that is because he doesn't ever want his staff to represent correction, hatred, punishment at all times, or else the sheep would never come near. How many times as mommies and daddies, we've been the wrong staff, the wrong rod, Instead of loving our family, our kids, 
their fear is so much greater than the love. They see us as a rod of correction. They see a rod of punishment. They see a rod of discipline, but they never see the rod of love. And this shepherd uses that same rod to discipline, to correct. When they fall in a ditch, he uses that same rod to put it around their neck and rescue them. And he uses the same rod to show them love. What if our mouth was used to train up our children, to love our kids, and to love them at the same time? Too many times we're so busy, life's so busy, that we have a mouth of correction, a mouth of discipline. Oh, let me tell you how you need to be walking. Let me tell you how you need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. We always have an opinion, amen? We always want to throw this out. We, all, we have this, man, our rod, our staff of our mouth is nothing. Our lifestyle is nothing but correction. Did you do this wrong? We don't celebrate the 88, the B. Well, you can do better than that, the A. Oh, we down them for the C. How many times have you corrected all oh, this C? You need to get that up to A. Man, that C's great. Man, that's good. But, you know, I know we can do better. I know we can do better. How many times our mouth, our lifestyle is the rod of correction, the rod of punishment, the rod of discipline, and it's never the rod of love. I knew you did wrong, but let me just love on you. Let me just hug you. Let me give you a kiss. Amen. I want my son to see me like my father should be seen. That he's a God, he's a father of love. He's corrected me, but he's loved me more times than he's ever disciplined me. And his discipline is love. It's time that we stop having this distorted love and we start walking out the love that we should portray to our kids. Let's be a rod, let's be a staff of love, amen? Can we? Can we show more love? Can our lifestyle show more love? And that might not be just a hug in the morning, but does your lifestyle, I, I'm, I'm gonna leave here at church. I know my wife and my son's watching. I'm gonna be leaving here at church and we're gonna have lunch. I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna eat lunch. And you know what's on my schedule right after that? It's, he's already called me before service. Daddy, you know, he, although he's still coughing and everything. Daddy, are, are, are we still gonna have that Nerf war? Yes, son, we're gonna have that Nerf war. We're gonna have that Nerf war. I wanna take time because when I take time, for my son that's showing him love. It's showing that you guys aren't first. I don't mean that in a bad way. I love you guys. I love the sheep. But you're not first. You can't be or else I'd be out of order. God's first. My marriage. My kids. I have to be there so he knows how to be God's child that he knows how to be a husband and he knows how to be a daddy and that's love amen hey everyone hey pastor Daniel I hope that you enjoyed the message today powerful word powerful word from God and we want you to get connected with us we want to hear from you if you gave your heart to the Lord today from the message we want to hear from you email us at admin at peakworship.com and give us the good news so we could celebrate with you. And we want you to check out the website, peakworship.com. And we want you to like us on Facebook and Instagram. You can like me on um, Facebook and Instagram personally. We want to get connected with you. We want to share our hearts with you. And we want to hear more about what's going on in your life. So make sure that you get plugged in and get connected.